All right, well I'm back a couple of days later than I said it would be. Um, I've done a load test on these cheap batteries and I'm pretty comfortable they do exactly what they say they do. Uh, still the caveat is the slow charge rates, 20 amp charge rate, 50 amp continuous draw. Um, but I'm so happy with it that, well, I bought more. I bought 12 more, so this is a 15 kilowatt system. Uh, having watched how the Victron inverter on the caravan performed, uh, I was so convinced that I went and bought a big one for the house. All right, alt tech to get our inverter. They're already sitting out in the front there waiting for us by the look of it. Okay, let's bang that thing in the car. This is a 48,000. Um, we're gonna try and run the whole house on it, but uh, in the interim, I might just put a few critical circuits on it since we only have 15 kilowatt hours worth of batteries. Um, may even postpone installing the batteries on the caravan and use them on the house. That'll total 25 kilowatt hours because it sort of became pretty obvious with the, the drawer on the caravan that uh, 10 kilowatt hours is not that much. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, and when you're talking about batteries that are this cheap, uh, well, you just buy more, right? Like it strikes me that um, that just makes sense. So, in the meanwhile, I've been doing some research about uh, other alternative methods to charge things. Um, Victron supports a whole bunch of things. You can have uh, inverters that are just your normal PV inverters that are non-islanding inverters, um, and you can run them out of band and use a a meter and this will charge batteries based on what it sees your house inverter producing power at or uh, we bought this thing second hand out of Gumtree uh, it was 150 bucks it's not the recommended version it's a Galvo it's a three kilowatt Galvo um, but it does support zero grid feeding so not recommended by Victron because of the limited voltage but it will work uh, so we've got three kilowatts worth of solar panels on the MPPTs which are supposed to go into the caravan, but at this rate, I still I want to test this. So um, we're going to run the MPPTs with three kilowatts worth of panels. I'll get another additional three kilowatts worth of panels out of Gumtree and attach this to it. So that means that in total, there's six on the house. There'll be six behind the Quattro. Three of it is AC coupled with the Fronius inverter. Three of it is on the Victron MPPTs. The other six is out of band, so it's it's on the house. So we install a smart meter on the house, it'll see the power going to the grid uh, and the Victron will know that it can pull extra power to charge the house, oh sorry, charge the batteries. Um, the problem with that is that the outer band PV inverter will not be available when the grid goes down. This one will. Um, and the benefit of this, as far as I see it, and Victron doesn't recommend it, they recommend only charging from the MPPTs. The benefit of this is if it's producing three kilowatts and you have a six kilowatt load, Three kilowatts comes from this, and three kilowatts comes from this. If you've got, don't have one of these, and you're going DC only, all six kilowatts needs to come from this. Now, this one's eight, uh, eight constant load, um, 20 kilowatt uh, peak, so it's huge, really. Um, but I still feel like, uh, keep the temp down on this so that it can handle the peak loads and let this thing during the day do all the heavy lifting. Um, these are daisy chainable, you can link I think three or four of them together, maybe even more than that, I'm not sure, not a solar expert, um, but I'd be happy, these are cheap in Gumtree, I'd be happy just to keep grabbing these and keep daisy chaining them until I get the size I want. Um, the factor 1.0 rule for Victron says that uh, you shouldn't exceed the wattage in PV, AC coupled PV that is, uh, of the VA rating, so this is a 10,000 VA. I shouldn't exceed 10,000 watts of uh, AC coupled PV. And the, the point of that is that if suddenly your loads disappear and this thing's pumping out all this power, uh, they communicate over TCP. So the time it takes for that message to get to the inverter, to tell the inverter to stop producing power, that has to absorb the power. So there, there's risks here, right? So we want to do half of it AC coupled. So this thing will never be working too hard uh, and it'll be able to guarantee that it can absorb the load. Um, and the rest of it will go MPPT directly to the batteries. So all these brown boxes are the batteries. 12 of them there at the moment, um, but we're gonna buy more. 
Anyway, uh, I've expended my budget for the month and I unfortunately get paid monthly, so 26 days until next payday and I'll, uh, as soon as I do, I'll start commissioning this stuff. Um, we bought a second hand shed and I've nominated this wall, although, yeah, it, it probably needs some substantial reinforcement because that thing is heavy. But this is the wall it's going to get installed on. Um, that pergola behind it is obviously falling to bits, so I've got to rip that down. Uh, but we're going to install the inverter here, the batteries will be in here. If there's a fire or uh, anything risky to the house, it'll be contained in here. Um, and yeah, we'll run some power leads back to the house and see how much of the house we can get off grid. Uh, bear in mind that yeah, 15 kilo, even 25 kilowatt hours is not really that much. So um, we might just do a couple of circuits to begin with, and then after that we'll yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bang some bang some more batteries in hopefully, and see how it goes. Alright, cheers.